All right, so we're back and we were examining this place, right? We can't go into the uh, the, the the room. What the hell is that room called? Labyrinth room. Yeah, yeah. These are the detectives' desks. There are computers and files on each one. Funny, they're a lot tidier than I'd expect. I guess the detectives don't spend a lot of time at their desk. Is it once again, I would say a good thing. That's what I would expect and I would want. That must be one of the detectives. He's mumbling something to himself. That's it. The villain used a time machine. Very clever indeed. That would explain the alibi. The future might not be so far away after all. Uh... He is not writing a report, he's writing a novel. Oh, thank God. Okay, I was like, did he, does he actually expect that someone went through a time machine? That man must be the chief of detectives. He's staring at the screen so hard it might shatter. What? Drake case may have been fabricated. That's what I thought all along. I just never bothered to tell anyone. Great. Now there's a guy who cares about his work. <laughs> so this is the police mascot, is it? The Blue Badger, the future star of the police force. The design's a little changed from the one outside. Ah well, the Dancing Blue Badger trademark is still under development, you see. You have it trademarked? Absolutely, it's cutting edge stuff, very now. I showed this doll here to my daughter and she burst into tears. Don't show her the moving mock-up outside there, you'll give her nightmares. Eh. A poster of a female police officer. Wait, no. That's the latest babes in uniform calendar. My bad. Yeah. Alright, give me a second. Ooh, alright. Um, We're done examining this place, right? Going straight to the chief's office? Wait. I have a thing. Couldn't I also... Take me to freaking write and go. I could go to the... Oh, I could not? Couldn't I go to the... Huh. It takes me straight in, but not to the entrance. Okay, whatever. Let's go to the chief's office. Oh my god! Okay. You have a freaking grand piano in here? February 24th, Police Department Chief's Office. And there's a photo of the three of them with the suit of armor. Whoa, where am I? The shield is... Is not broken, does it have like a knife through it or something? In the Chief's Office, silly. At least that's what it said on the door. Check out that pipe organ. It's real, isn't it? Hey, I used to take organ lessons in kindergarten? What the hell? They used to call me Little Miss Bah. Bah. Whatever. I thought I was a genius until they tried teaching me notes. Oh god. I never could remember where C was. Hmm? The chief is here. Oh, it's you two. Chief Grant! He put that paper he was reading in his desk and there's the suit of armor. So that's where the photo was taken, I suppose. So, Righto, have you been swimming, swimming lately? Why does he love swimming so much? Uh, no, I haven't. I have been kind of busy lately. I can appreciate that. I have had my hands full too with Mr. Marshall's misconduct and Lana's provocative statement. Oh, provocative statement. Oh, you mean about the forged evidence. Two years have passed since that incident. My, how time flies. That big picture on the wall over there? Yep, it's Grant, it's Marshall, meaning the king of prosecutor's award, the day he died. And there's a damn pot in the background. 
What the hell is it through it though? It's like a knife. And uh, Lana is there obviously. It does have a, like a sword, broken sword through it. That's a picture of Lana and Eel and me, and the shield was always broken. So this is Mr. Marshall's brother, Prosecutor Neil Marshall, and there's a damn pot. We took it to commemorate our work together. Hmm. Something's not right with this picture. I can't quite seem to put my finger on it though. What do you mean? That the knife in the damn sta the trophy and the pot is in the background. Grand team picture added to the court record. Photo at the award ceremony of Grant, Lana, and Neil. Okay. Oh. Anyway, I'd like to reminisce all day, but there are matters that need my attention. I'm going to lock up here, so let's go out together. Oh, I can't examine. But this office, it was a crime scene two years ago, wasn't it? That case has long since been over. There's no need to investigate it anymore. Yeah, because you killed people? All the same, we'd still like to have a look around. Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said there's no need to investigate it anymore. Oh. Now hurry up and get out. I have a meeting to attend. Put us out. Looks like we aren't welcome. Seems that case isn't over with yet after all. What do you mean? Chief Grant denied our request to search the crime scene. That means there must be a reason he doesn't want us looking around in there. You mean like a clue? There's got to be a way we can get inside the chief's office. Surely, he has locked it and he's gone to a meeting. Go back in. Gumshu, maybe he can help us? February 24th, Police Station, Criminal Affairs Department. Hey pal, yep, it's Gumshu. Detective Gumshu, aren't you supposed to be in a meeting? Kicked out? I'm uh, just taking a breather, my feet hurt. From sitting so long? Actually, from serving everyone coffee, what the hell? Sounds like Detective Gumshoe is still out of the loop. Hey, have either of you seen Mr. Edgeworth? Edgeworth? No, why do you ask? He is under fire from both the police department and the prosecutor's office. It's almost like the battles between you two in court. That sounds serious. Is it because of what my sister said? Yes. That's basically what it all boils down to. That falsified evidence two years ago. Now Mr. Edgeworth has the whole world after his blood. Yikes. Hey, is there anything new to examine though? Oh, let me talk to him. That man must be the chief of detectives. He's staring at the screen so hard it might shatter. What? Police department makes fatal error. What do I do? Quick, someone bring me the classifieds. Help wanted section. Yeah, he thinks he's gonna lose his job. So much for duty. Yeah, he's like, oh shit, I'm gonna be fired. Get me out of here. That must be one of the detectives. He's mumbling something to himself. I got it, I am the culprit. Very clever indeed. Who would have thought of multiple personalities? I don't see how else he could have done it. I guess it's time to have my head checked. Hmm. I think it's way past time for that. Great. Writing is a novel. Can't go anywhere else. Uh, let's present all our evidence to him. My badge. Detective, here is my attorney's badge. You show this to me every time we meet, pal. Real men show their police badge. Nuff said. 
I wish I had a badge. Even an ID card would be nice. ID card. This ID card belongs to the victim, Detective Bruce Goodman. You can do just about anything these days with a card and a secret number. Scary. It's only scary because you keep dropping your card, Detective Gumshoe. I forget my secret number too a lot too. I'm scared of myself. But, but I'm me after all. And what could be wrong with that? I think I'll stay out of this conversation. He keeps forgetting. It's fine. Hey, that's it. The sword is gone. That's the King of Prosecutors Award that Mr. Edgeworth got the other day. Were you at the award ceremony, uh, Detective Gumshoe? Of course, pal. I got an award for diligence myself. Ah, congratulations. I was wondering, why is the award a shield? And why is it broken? Oh, there's a reason. Um, I'll tell you what it is later. Apparently, he's forgotten. He has forgotten. Nice. Found in Mr. Edgeworth's car, stabbed with Mr. Edgeworth's knife, huh? What would drive Chief Prosecutor Sky to do such a thing? And she's gonna be mad. Uh, sad, I guess. But wait, I didn't mean... I mean, sure, of course, someone else really did it. Someone who must have... Uh, someone who must have a grudge against Mr. Edgeworth. Mm -hmm. Same thing. His masterpiece. This guy almost made us lose the case today. What are you talking about? He was guarding the blood stain on that evidence locker with his life. That's more than you can say about most officers nowadays. Great. It would have saved us a lot of trouble if he hadn't guarded it, guarded it so well. I have to admit he's right though. Yeah, otherwise it would have been wiped or. Thanks to the blue badger, we were able to prove another possibility today. The possibility that another murder took place prior to 5.15 pm. Why are you laughing? Autopsy report. Let me share a little advice with you as a detective. If you don't have a clue, keep your trap shut. I'll uh, keep that in mind. See? Alright. Okay, another advice. More advice, more advice, a lot of advice here. I guess these are just diagrams. Crime photo. That's the photo that Miss Star took. Anything you can tell us about it? That Miss Star is quite the lady. My, I remember it was winter and I was 16. She was the only one who got, only one who ever got me to talk about what happened. Jeez, that's how old I am now. I wonder what happened. I wonder if, if Detective Gumshoe wore a trench coat in high school too. Yeah, what ha what did happen to him? Okay, more advice. Uh, oh, there it, come on. Nice. Um, about this. Hey, is that... It has a tag attached to it with the label SL9 incident on it. I believe this would be the broken murder weapon you were speaking of. What are you doing with that? Ever since that case was closed, that knife's been locked away in a locker. On the day Detective Goodman was murdered, this suddenly disappeared from the locker. And was found in Mr. Edgeworth's car muffler. Hmm. That's it! Now I remember what that incriminating piece of evidence was. When you showed me that knife, it all came back to me. Well, what is a detective? Quick, before you forget again. I am able to ask him normally. Hey, I just bought some of that stuff. Now I can go around detecting blood traces too. That doesn't look the same. Wow, is that a new type? I've never seen that bottle before. 
Add three inches to your base height. Oh. Base height? Hey, let me see that. Zooming tall. New and improved growth formula. You mean this can't detect any blood traces? Uh, well, it's not quite the same thing as luminol. So that's why the lady at the counter had that smirk on her face. Right. That's the ID card record, isn't it? It is. We don't know who the first person is. Yes, there's only one number left to investigate at 4.20 p.m. The victim, Detective Goodman, must have entered the evidence room along with someone else. Someone with an executive officer number. Great. That's one seven two many detectives. I'm not gonna say that. An executive officer. Hmm, I just might have a hunch. Yeah, we know who it is. Hey, that powder is used for detecting fingerprints. Yeah, Mr. Edgeworth gave it to us. He did what? All I have is some flour. Flour? Are you using flour? Are you okay, detective? Quick, run! Achoo! Oh, it happened again. It happened again. Hmm. Uh. If it's any help, one time I took a nap on a bench with wet paint. Why am I not comforted? Great. It's a screwdriver. Oh, he's got... Doesn't know anything. Oh, a lost item report, huh? Very impressive, detective. You knew what it was right off the bat. Well, I am a master of misplacement, you know. Master, that has such a cool ring to it. The way I see it, if things are meant to be lost, then they are meant to be lost. There's a higher power at work here. Great. Wow, a higher power. Maybe I shouldn't let Emma hold any evidence. Yeah, she's gonna start losing things. Evidence room diagram. Don't care about that. The glove. He doesn't know anything about the glove. Final page. The lockers. No locker can be opened without a fingerprint match. Besides, there's no reason for the murderer to touch his own locker. Hey, wasn't your locker the one with the blood on it, detective? The handprint of the real murderer's gloved hand, without any fingerprints. Shish! If they come to arrest me, you'll defend me, won't you? If that happens, I think you will do better pleading with Edgeworth. And the pot... About that jar, I think I've seen it before somewhere. Somewhere? Or maybe it's one of those memories people have from previous lives. What the hell? This must be the most uninformative detective I've ever met. Something about it makes me feel uneasy. It's like I'm in the chief's office and he's yelling at me. Chief Grant? Where could I have seen that before? In his office? Come on. There's a photo. I can't believe Officer Marshall would do something like that. You know Officer Marshall? Of course I do. He was like a mentor to me. When I first started out, he even gave me a small cactus. Really? He said Dick should listen to all your troubles. Note to self, Detective Gums who talks to a cactus. Hard to believe he's just a patrolman now. Someone ought to trade places with him. Hmm. What? Why are you looking at me like that? The tape. He doesn't care about the tape. The SL9 files. I have been studying up on those files. There's nothing wrong with Mr. Edgeworth's presentation. To think people are accusing him of injustice. I for one ain't buying it, pal. You're looking into the case for Mr. Edgeworth? Yeah, it was a pretty big deal while it was going on, you know. 
After all, a serial killer was on the loose. But Lana was pretty clear in her confession. She forged evidence in order to prove Joe Drake guilty. And the photo. Oh, he doesn't care about the photo. Okay. I guess we talk about Edgeworth's crisis. But why would Edgeworth be blamed? It's not like he knew the evidence was forged. Lana Sky is the guilty party here, isn't she? Uh, she's sad again. Regardless, a prosecutor is responsible for the evidence they present in court. Not only that, but as you know, there have been a lot of rumors going around about Mr. About Mr. Edgeworth. His amazing talent as a prosecutor kept him safe from those who don't like him. But now with this, are there really so many people who hate him? He's the best. So yes. In our world, only those with talent rise to the top. Mr. Edgeworth no, not only has that, but he's young. There's no better recipe I know of for making enemies. Hey Dick, keep up the good work. Yes sir. Let's go out for lunch again sometime. My treat. Yes sir. You gotta take me back to that joint sometime, okay Dick? Yes sir. It seems you don't have any problems with enemies. Yeah, well, I'm careful not to stick out. Anyway, I'm a bit, I'm a bit worried about him. Under all this pressure, I'm afraid Mr. Edgeworth just might crack. SL9. Actually, I took a look at the file earlier, while the coffee was brewing. He seems genuinely concerned for Edgeworth. Well, did you find out anything? The only evidence Drake left behind was during his final attack. His final attack, you mean? When he killed a prosecutor Marshall who was trying to protect some girl. Some girl, huh? Me. It seems Detective Gumshoe never realized Emma was the girl. That's when he left the most incriminating evidence of all. Well, what was it? Oh, um, let's see. I think it had something to do with the murder weapon, the knife. But it was not an exact match. Oh, I forgot. Look, it's all written somewhere in here, okay? The powers of recollection never fail to impress. Maybe we should show him the murder weapon. It might jog his memory. If he did, Drake's crime. Joe Drake was 42 at the time of the crime. He was just your run of the mill businessman. A businessman? What made him take to serial killing? One day on his way home from work, he hit someone with his car. With his car? So it was an accident and he realized he liked it. An accident, yes, but it transformed him into an animal. An animal? He killed a man that witnessed the thing and then a woman and then a kid who walked by killed him too. A jogger came up on the scene and was killed as well. Finally turned himself in. What the hell? Seems he was a pretty careless animal. Of course, this is all conjecture. There wasn't a single shred of evidence other than all the dead bodies. So he turned himself in. Yes, but in the middle of his questioning, he fled and murdered his final victim. Prosecutor Marshall. That crime was witnessed by someone too, but luckily Drake was arrested on the spot. It's a good thing that last witness wasn't killed. That last witness... A.K.A. Emma. I think it wasn't even him, maybe. I don't know. Maybe it was him. Who knows? I think it was... Maybe it was freaking... The chief uh, of police is doing this all now. I don't know. This night, it was Joe Drake, wasn't it? That's right. We traced it back to the store he bought it at. Plus, it had his fingerprints on it too. 
but no one actually witnessed him using it to murder anyone, right? That's where his luck ran out. When you take a good look at the knife, you'll see it's broken. You don't have to take a good look to notice that. Yeah, well anyway, take a guess where the broken off tip of the knife was found. That's what did him in. Where was it? In the body. The victim, Neil Marshall, was carrying it inside his own body. Oh! It was found deep inside the stab wound. Did it match Drake's knife? You bet, down to the last fiber. That's pretty conclusive. Neil's autopsy report added to the court record. Neil's autopsy report stabbed in the back, died from punctured heart and lung. A knife tip was in the wound. Pun stabbed in the back? knife updated in the court record. The broken tip was found in the victim's body. Belonged to the murderer Joe Drake. Well, there you have it in a nutshell. That's all I know. Can I ask you one more thing? What is it? If it's money you need, you should ask Chief Grant. It's not money, but it does concern the Chief. His office is a crime scene, right? It's where Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. The Chief's out now and his office is locked. But we'd have to have... We'd like to have a look around if that's okay. Hmm. Help us, man. Well, any detective's ID card can unlock the door. What? Really? But if I let a civilian in there, I'd be charged with breach of trust. Breach of trust? Simply put, I'd be canned. Oh. Sorry, pal. I don't plan on getting fired because of you. How about this ID card? It was Detective Goodman's. That won't work either. The data was deleted the day he was died. The day he died. He was died? What the hell am I talking about? Oh. So, in, in other words, Gumshoe is our only chance of getting into that office. Or Marshall, if he is out. I wonder if there's something we could show him that would change his mind. Uh, freaking the, the freaking picture. Let me share your advice with you as a detective. If you don't have a clue, keep your trap shut. Keep that in mind. Sheesh. Name of deceased. Neil Marshall, 27 male. Date and time of death, February 19th, between 7 and 7.30 p.m. Cause of death. Single stab wound, piercing heart lung. Assessment. Died from blood loss in under 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Seven was found in wound. Weapon found in wound was missing tip. We are showing this. I mean, it has a broken tip. Sword inside the damn statue, too. But, got the jar I before somewhere. Memories of previous lives. Studying, presented, justice, signed, by in it. Yeah, it was a pretty big deal. After all, seal it was on the loose. We forged. Okay, so it's none of these. What about the tape? Sandpit, Officer Marshall, something like that. You know, Officer Marshall, of course I do. The mentor, small cactus. Patrolman, someone should swap places. Why are you looking at me? What the hell do you want me to show him to change his mind to letting us into the office? Lost item report. Something is going to be lost at the higher power. Uh, Screwdriver? But it was ordered by it by Grant, bro. Run, Achu, yeah. Oh, this probably helps, right? Yes, there's only one number to investigate. 420, the victim must have come in on someone else. Executive office number. 
Can't be him. Seven, 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 seven. That's one, seven, two. Many detective. An executive officer. Hmm. I just might have a hunch. I just bought that. Yeah, but that's a growth thing. Knife. About this, hey, it's that dust attack. I believe this would murder weapon. That's it. Now I remember incriminating. Two. This thing, Miss Star. She made him talk. Phone. The note. The autopsy report for good man. One knife wound again. Put the case. You're guarding evidence. Knife. Okay. Well. This thing. That's it, King of Thing. He got with the board ceremony. He got diligence. Why is it broken? Goodman's ID. It's scary because he keeps dropping it. What the hell do you want me to talk about? That's right. Handprints on it. Witnessing using it. Still plan out. This is broken. There was it. It is inside his body. In the wound. Magic exam. You bed onto the last fiber. Pretty conclusive. Nine. Final attack when he killed this person. Me doesn't know. Most incriminating evidence. What was it? Heavy sword, rich crime, 42, a businessman, he crashed a car, became an animal, he killed a man that witnessed the accident, then he killed the lady who saw the second crime, a kid walked by just then, so he killed them too, when he was burying the bodies, a jogger came upon the scene, was killed as well, finally he turned himself in. Pretty careless, conjecture, figure of evidence, prosecutor marshal, crime was witnessed, the good thing witness wasn't killed, okay, Emily. Anaska is guilty, regardless, not only that, there's a lot of rumors about him, and he doesn't have many friends. What the hell am I supposed to do, buddy? Take me to her, I guess, and show her some of the stuff. Hey, what do you think about uh, Neil's autopsy report? No business in Jabu. Okay, well, what about this? It's a freaking photograph, lady. You don't also not care about the knife? Nothing to talk about with her. Go back to the law offices. What do you think about Neil's autopsy? Here, see this. Okay, and then you can also see the knife. Why would this have been in the car's exhaust pipe? It's evidence from an old case, right? Right, the SL9 incident. It was solved, apparently. This knife was stolen on the day of the evidence transfer. Maybe I should look into this SL9 incident. Okay. Oh, nice. Not helpful. Uh, maybe he is back? Yes! February 24th, Higher Prosecutor's Office, Room 1202. I wonder if Edgeworth is back yet. There he is, it looks like he's writing something. Bah, what are you doing here? Sure was quick to throw that paper on the floor. Tough day in court, huh? Huh. I've had to live with the past two years with rumors flying around. What's another allegation to me? 
Cheer up, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm rooting for you. And not your sister. That's Edgeworth for you. Always trying to hide his real feelings. So what do you want? Unlike some people, I don't have all day. I would like to examine the like, your this thing. He won such a prestigious award. Why would he just leave it on the couch? Show off against the samurai. What is it? Speaking of prosecutor's award, right? Of course it is. You know that. I saw something today that looked like this somewhere. Something that looked like that? Yeah, only different. Now where was that? She's right. Something's amiss here. Maybe I should show Edgeworth that item. That item, huh? I know what it is. I wonder what he was writing before. Come on, Mr. Wright, let's take a look. Are you crazy? Edgeworth is sitting right there. Just distract him. I'll check it out. Uh, hey, Edgeworth. That detective gumshoe out the window there? Oh no, he's falling to the ground. Hold on. First, let me see what this girl's doing crawling around my feet. He didn't even look. What? Letter of re 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 resignation. If you're having trouble reading, I'll read it for you. It says, Letter of Resignation. Resignation? Edgeworth, you don't mean... I'm tired, right? I feel as if something inside me has died. But Mr. Edgeworth, none of it is your fault. I, d I know the path I've walked. You don't need to tell me. And the path I've walked hasn't been a just one. I can't forgive myself for what I've done. And no one else should forgive me either. Uh-oh, I think he's serious. Mr. Wright, please, you have to do something. This letter of resignation, I wonder if I can use it for anything. Letter of resignation put into pocket. Edgeworth's discarded letter of resignation. He's serious. Well... I can examine it. What has he written? I can check. Due to recent events, I hereby announce my resignation as public prosecutor. He really wrote a resignation letter. Wow, even when resigning, Mr. Edgeworth is cool and concise. Still, it wasn't his fault. Someone has to be held responsible. That's how it is in the grown-up world. Yeah, but that responsibility means nothing if he just quits. Well, not everyone sees it that way. To truly take responsibility, you should have to work the rest of your life without one no pay. What the hell are you talking about? That's one tough grown-up world there. If you make a mistake, you that basically just die. You work for no pay. That seems like a garbage plan. Is it? Positive evidence. There's no excuse for what I've done. Two years ago, I used false evidence to obtain a guilty verdict. That's what it all breaks down to. Nothing I can do. Nothing I do can erase that fact. But you didn't know, did you? I mean, that the evidence was falsified. The pro police department and the pol prosecutor's office share a bond of trust. If that bond is broken, we stand to lose everything. The police department's error is my error and my responsibility as the prosecutor in charge. That, fan re that fact remains the same, no matter what excuses I might have. Mr. Edgeworth, I take pride in my work. So tell me why? Why has it all come to this? Even Edgeworth can't keep this kind of emotion bottled up. Hmm, give me a second. Alright, let's talk about tomorrow's trial. Are you up for the trial tomorrow? He's resigning though. I mean, finish the case, then resign. Ha! Huh. 
first last year's trial and now this one. It seems all you do is worry about me. To be honest, you're getting on my nerves. Oh, give me a second. Ah, I'm getting on his nerves, am I? But Mr. Edgeworth, you can't just walk out on the trial. Tomorrow is the last day. It's too late to change prosecutors. Yeah, he'll finish the trial and then go. I'll bet that's what my superiors are banking on. I never thought that case would come back to haunt me like this. What do you mean? The list of evidence. It seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. It's only half as long as most lists. That is odd. After Neil Marshall was murdered, I became prosecutor for that case. So he did take over, right? Right. I may not have been part of the investigation, but I knew what I had to do. Use the evidence I was given to prove the suspect was guilty. That was really the only thing on my mind at the time. Hey, we just saw a picture taken around that time. That picture, something seemed strange about it. Yeah, the knife, you know, the day of the crime. We'll ask him everything. Could you tell us again about what happened that day? The day Detective Goodman was murdered? You were participating in the in a ceremony over at the station, right? I have never cared for ceremonies, but I had to attend that one. Because you were awarded this. Those receiving awards can't exactly skip out on the ceremony. I finished up at the office in the morning, then drove over to the police department. You finished up at the office? Yes, just odds and ends, clerical stuff. I didn't plan on returning to the office that day. Huh. That is until I was asked to take something back. Take something back. The screwdriver lady, come on. This. Oh yeah, Chief Grant asked you to hold on to that, didn't he? Yes, it was a piece of evidence in a case that was closed half a year ago. He asked me to bring it back to the prosecutor's office. That's the story we heard yesterday. Yeah. So you came back here to the prosecutor's office because the chief asked you to. That's right. Hmm. It all points to the chief, man. I once dreamed of being a defense attorney a long time ago. What? You wanted to become a defense attorney, Mr. Edgeworth? Yet a clear path is laid out before me. I have no time to look back on what might have been. You can always change. Right. right, please. I'm the prosecutor on this case. Don't expect me to sit here and discuss the case with you over a cup of tea. I'll pass on the tea. Just tell me about the case. Mr. Wright. Mr. Edgeworth just told you no in a very stylish manner. Whose side are you on anyway? Yeah, yeah, whatever. Maybe if I just show him my best evidence, I can get some reaction out of him. Okay, okay. I, I, I get it. I get it. What about this? They say where there's smoke, there's fire. Apparently, I was so caught up in the smoke, I lost sight of the truth. Edgeworth. The others are right. I have no right to serve as a prosecutor. But Mr. Edgeworth, you were only doing your job. I've always made my own decisions about what I can or cannot do. That hasn't changed. Forgiving myself is something I cannot do. Uh-oh, I think he's serious. Mr. Wright, please, you have to do something. This letter of resignation, I wonder if I can use it for anything. Yeah, yeah, I know. Skills autopsy. It's a photo that we want, but we'll try everything just in case. You never know. Maybe we get a reaction? I don't think so. 
So we should just show him that. Just show him the photo. Oh. What the hell? He talked about something. See? It seems everything in this case is designed, designated to cast doubt on him. Hey, don't look at me. Yes, I went into the evidence room on the day of the crime. Chief Grant asked me to do something. To take evidence from a case solved six months ago back to the prosecutor's office. I have a locker in there as well. Did you notice anything amiss when you were in the evidence room? That room's always dark and I was in a hurry. I didn't see anything out of the ordinary. Okay, press glove, no. Ah, uh, what is going on here? Okay. Oh, oh, yeah, okay, alright. Who said are you on anyway? You keep showing him stuff. We got, an, uh, we got a reaction out of one thing, so. You never know. The screwdriver. Remember, I saw I did. She can't give you the... Okay, I gotta go to do it again. Hmm. Come now, right. You can't seriously expect me to just sit down. And chat with you about the case over a cup of tea. But this isn't re related to the case, remember? You said so yourself. So I did. Chief Grant gave this to you that day, didn't he? He asked you to bring it here from the police department. The chief is a very competent man. But sometimes he does things that don't make any sense. At least it's be better than being incompetent and doing things that don't make sense. A certain detective comes to mind. Come on, don't talk about gumshoe like that. Hmm. As prosecutor, I expected a cup of tea, tell me about the case, told you no. Okay. Seems everything in this case is designated to be designed to cast doubt on me. Don't look at me, evidence room, do something, take evidence, I have a locker in there. I didn't see anything out of the ordinary, okay. So one other reaction on two evidence. The shoe. Nope, don't care about the shoe. Photograph. This, whatever the hell that is. The phone. Note. The autopsy report. I mean, this is all re related to the case. So his own parking stuff? You gave this to me! It's your own damn knife! It's your trophy! You know, it wouldn't hurt if you put this up somewhere, like on a shelf. That has no meaning for me anymore. What do you mean anymore? That's who I was last year. What good is it to dwell on the past? He's asking me. Arg, why can't he just accept it graciously? Actually, something's been troubling me about this shield. Look, do you notice anything different? Different? Yeah, don't you remember the other shield in the court record? I guess I'd better present this other shield. Yeah, I, I know. Alright, alright, I'll show it to him. Here you go. This picture was hanging on the wall in Chief Grant's office. How did we get a photo of it? 
See, the, the shield is different. Prosecutor Neil Marshall. He had just started making a name for himself. Looks like this was taken when he received the King of Prosecutor's trophy. Speaking of that, there's something that bothers me. Yes? The trophy Mr. Marshall is holding. It's a little different than yours. Yes, you're right. Ah, I remember now. Remember what? That was what the official prosecutor's trophy looked like until two years ago. Ooh. There's a story behind its design. A story? Sounds interesting. Would you mind telling it to us? It's simple, really. Contradiction. That's what the award's based on. Here's the other award. Ask me, is the issue something troubling me? Look. Okay, maybe I can talk to him about it? Yeah, King of Prosecutor's Trophy. This award originates from an ancient Chinese tale. In Chinese, the word contradiction is written with two characters. The first means halberd, the second means shield. Have you heard this story? Me? Oh, uh, sure. Everyone knows that. Why don't you tell it though? For Emma's sake. Great. Very well. Oh, the freaking... The freaking... Uh, what is that called? The... Uh, testimony music. Long time ago in the kingdom of Chu, there was an arms merchant. One day he presented the king with two items. The first was a halberd he claimed could slice through any shield or armor. The second was a shield he claimed could withstand any weapon. Hmm, there's a contradiction in there. Wait a minute, objection! Those claims contradict each other. Great. Very perceptive. But then again, you've heard this story before, right? Anyways, as you mentioned, the very descriptions of these items discredit them both. When the king pointed this out, the merchant was left speechless. And thus the word, the Chinese word for contradiction was born. Halberd shield. Oh, I see. So the chipped shield and the broken knife symbolize... Precisely so. They symbolize the merchant's items. The ancient tale ends with the merchant at a loss for words. But it's in our nature to pursue matters to their conclusion. Even if it results in something as ugly as this. Wow! Thanks, Mr. Edgeworth. I learned something new today. Incredible. I so did I. That's funny. What the hell? Yeah, nothing. Alright. If that's so, then why were you only given a shield? You'll have to ask Chief Grant. Two years ago, he had the Halbert part of the award abolished. Chief Grant, again. King of Prosecutor's Trophy updated in the court record. Two years ago, the Halbert was removed at Grant's behest, giving it its current form. Because it was used in a dang murder. It was used in a murder. February 24, Prosecutor's Office, Underground Parking Lot. What's happening here? Excuse me, is it Star? It is Star. Would either of you care for a quarter pound of roast beef? Sounds pretty good. Miss Star, I guess she's out of lunches, so now she's only selling ingredients. You certainly are the curious sort, aren't you? Kind of like the first person who sucked a cow's nipple to discover milk. What the hell? I love the music. Still, I never thought you would go digging up that case from two years ago. Everyone in this trial was involved in the SL9 incident. 
not only that but the murder occurred on the very day the evidence from that case was due for transferal this can't be attributed all this can't all be attributed to mere coincidence hmm. aren't you forgetting something you know that little scene i happened to witness yeah the instant lana stabbed detective goodman with a knife no matter how much of the past you dig up it won't change what i saw roast beef is meant to be savored when eaten miss star's hatred towards lana it all dates back to 2 years ago probably one second i got to go back to uh, him and present him the new evidence the sheet was updated right put it up on the shelf okay just just making sure there's nothing new is there anything left to examine we did do it all last time we were here just look at the green ticks that's all we need as long as everything is in mean, the red ticks you know what i mean as long as everything is good we're good to move forward okay can talk to her about the drake investigation joe drake that's a name i'll not soon forget we trailed him for half a year oh the pressure still i don't think i was ever more alive than i was then those days were steamier than a bowl of hot gravy Poor old Jake Marshall though must have been going through hell. You mean because of his brother's death? They were close those two. After Neil died, something took over Jake. He became obsessed. Seeing Jake like that made her all the more desperate. Her Lana Sky. My sister. the best of the best were put on that SL9 case of course they were led by the legendary duo lana and chief grant but well, let's present some evidence first look at my badge i don't have anything else to tell you miss star The only thing I can give you now is a poppy seed rice set. Talk about cheap. Eat this and maybe you'll be able to tell black from white in court tomorrow. Incredible. I'll show her everything. So that don't believe the game right now. They should make a better system for this. If they really have nothing to say, This should happen without me having to choose any piece of evidence. It should just happen. Just tell me this, these whatever lines you want to tell me when I click on present evidence or whatever. Tell you, Mister Poppy Seed. I guess poppy seeds are pretty cheap, right? Luminol testing fluid. Numbers. The freaking powder. Screw driver. I guess she doesn't really know anything about the screw driver. It happened after her time as a detective. Was she also very good sushi? A uh, sushi hat back then. Oh God, there's so much evidence in this case. Holy crap! I mean, each one is more complex than the last one. Obviously, that's the whole point. Yeah, yeah, it's a pot. I get it. It was probably destroyed when uh, freaking the guy was murdered. Right when uh, freaking Marshall, the J 
Jake, Jake Marshall, one of the brother, was murdered. The prosecutor Marshall. That's when it was broken, coated with blood. Not even about the resignation letter. Alright, well. After case closed. That legendary pair was the reason we were able to keep up our investigation. That's why we were so shocked over how it turned out. You mean with the forging of evidence? Don't get me wrong, Joe Drake got what he deserved. Still, it was obvious the evidence produced in court was being manipulated. Items our team never found would suddenly appear, while other items were kept secret. But you don't have proof anything illegal was done. I am proof enough of what happened. No. Oh. After that case, all of us save good men were relieved of our duties. Most without even so much as an explanation. Then Lana Sky transferred to the prosecutor's office and became chief prosecutor. Lana always wanted to be a prosecutor. Nothing quite as simple as it appears. Huh? Lana Sky was merely being used as a pawn. That's my take on the matter. She was being used. Legendary duo. Damon Grant and Lana Sky. Grant led the investigation with Lana second in command. They were the best. They solved all kinds of cases together, didn't they? Damon Grant's magnetism in particular was almost unreal. His magnetism? By that I mean his ability to attract evidence. He'd produced the most incredible evidence in the cases he handled. Incredible evidence? You mean... Oh yes, there were rumors about him even back then. No one dared confront him though. I take it she's talking about forged evidence. Back then, everyone looked up to Lana. All the detectives wanted to be like her. Oh, really? Oh yes, myself included. I was a fool, really. <laughs> she hated anything crooked and always watched out for the other detectives. That's why she was so concerned for Jake. Mr. Marshall. When Jake's brother was murdered, she felt as if she had lost her own brother. If it wasn't for her, I don't think Jake would ever have recovered from his shock. That's what makes it all the more infuriating. Miss Starr. That's why I'll never be able to forgive her. Why did she have to turn so cold after that? Oh. Why was she being used? Dana transferred to the prosecutor's office two years ago, didn't she? Yes, thanks to Chief Grant's powerful influence. Chief. That's right, having solved the SL9 case, his position as Chief was secured. There was only one thing left for him to control. And then no one could stand in his way. Lana, obviously. The prosecutor's office. What? You mean that's why Lana was transferred? If he could control the chief prosecutor, he could control the prosecutor's office. That must have been his goal all along. But, but how could he control Lana? I don't know, but one thing's for sure. Ever since that case ended, she's never been the same. It's only logical to conclude. There must have been a reason for her change. At last. I'm finally getting close to the bottom of this ugly mess. Thank you, Miss Star. You listen to me, rookie. It takes more than just ingredients to create a fine cuisine. Create fine cuisine. 
I hope you turn out to be a better chef than I've been. Alright, lady. Whatever you say. Anything new to examine here? Probably not. Anything sneakily just placed in there? Not that I can see. Alright. But if it is, it's too sneaky for me. February 24th, Police Station Criminal Affairs Department. Oh, you're back. You're still here? I gotta make 150 copies of these files. Brewing coffee, copying files. I'm turning into a regular DJ? What the hell? You're a DJ as well? If I'm not mistaken, I think he means desk jockey. Hmm. Oh, that DJ. I gotta admire your persistency, but my answer still no. Oh? I'm not letting you into the chief office, period. It'd be my neck on the line. That office is the last crime scene in the SL9 incident. I have to I have to take a look in there. Two years he would have cleared everything, right? There's got to be something we can do to make the detective change his mind. Yeah, we can show him something. I bought something too, but not this episode. That must be one of the detectives. He's mumbling something to himself. Oh, Francesca, you are more lovely than a marsupial in... Quiet, John Mark. Words will just spoil the moment. Now hold me close. Yes, this approach allows for much more intrigue. Hmm. It seems he's given up on the mystery genre. Great. Now he's writing romance novels. Which are popular too. Right? Pretty popular, I think. You can just present this to him. You can present this to him too. He, he loves Edgeworth. If he loves Edgeworth, he's freaking resigning. That's gonna put him on edge. Alright. Uh, I'll see you in the next one.